Okay. Good afternoon. Happiness is the highest form of health. I welcome all for 76th episode of Creative Online Talks. Myself, Supriya Nayaka, MK, hosting this program. Microorganism plays a critical role in human health. The human health is the home to a huge and diverse community of microorganisms, consist of bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and viruses. And it maintains our immune system, regulate metabolism, break down food, contributing to met, uh, mental health, and many more. Today's creative talk spotlights on human microbiomes. Before start, I like to brief about creative. Creative is a group of people who are like-minded, who are eager to gain new knowledge. And vision of Creative is to build constructive thinking on various domain and main focus on non-textual, non-academic and non-syllabus related concepts. Creative. Cre means creativity. Active means activeness. Creativity keeps us active and knowledge square is our tagline. Sharing of knowledge increases our knowledge. Every Saturday, we organize weekend talks between uh, 3 to 4 p.m. on Zoom platform and we live streaming our program on our uh, YouTube channel, Creative GBD. We have social medias where you get mo uh, more updates about our activities. We are very thankful to all our resource persons for accepting and engaging us with their knowledge. And uh, Creative is a platform to the resource person to share their views and reviews, discoveries, and many more. Today's creative topic is uh, human, mi my, uh, human microbiomes. To present this, we have Dr. Shishupal sir with us today. Uh, I call uh, Creative volunteer, Mr. Ganesh, uh, to introduce today's speaker. Over to Ganesh. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, everyone. Namaskara. My name is Ganesh Kumaranda. So, mostly, we in the creative team. Na, apa ta idan episode ke aage me sirwa. Hello, everyone. Saagta na bai sathi dene. Haage, in the nau human microbiome. Vishaya da bagge. Tilu kolo do hoti divi. In the na vishaya da bagge na mage hello mahiti anu tilu salu. Nama jute sampan mula vikti adam tha. Doctor S. Shishupal sir. Professor, Department of Microbiology, Downingere University, Downingere. Our again, Naman Miller Paravagi, Sagatan by City. Adiri Segi, Sadbagi in a Hedgesol Patiliona, Sir Education Qualifications Pandu, MSc, MPL, PhD, Mysuri Visha Vedali Muxidare, Aga Matu, our awards, Hanas Fellowships Nordaga, University Post Graduate Research Fellowship from University of Mysore, Mysore, India. During 1988 to 1990, Matu Senior Research Fellowship from Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR New Delhi, India during 1990 to 1991. Hage awarded first prize for best research paper in oral presentation competition from Society of Biological Chemists, India, Mysore chapter, Mysore in 1991. Hage Senior Research Fellowship from Indian Council of Agriculture Research, IC, ICAR, New Delhi, India during 1991 to 1995. Hage Research Associate at Molecular Biophysics Unit, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore from Department of Biotechnology, DBT, Government of India, for postdoctoral research program during 1995 to 1996. Hadiritegi, member of committee for the purpose of control and supervision of experiments of, on animals, CPCSEA, Ministry of Environment and Forest, Government of India since 2000. Teacher Research Fellowship 2001 from Indian Academy of Science, Bangalore, to work in Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Hadiritegi, member of specialist panel for biotechnology and bio remedies. Life Science Research Board, Defense Research and Development Organization, DRDO, Government of India, New Delhi from 2006 to 2009. So we have a great resource person, 
ಡೇ ಅದೇ ಸರ್ ಇನ್ನ ಅವಾರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಹಾನರ್ಸ್ ಫೆಲೋಶಿಪ್ ತುಂಬಾ ದಂಡಾಗಿ ಬಂದಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಸೊ ಒಂದ್ ಒಂದ್ ದೊಡ್ಡ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ನಾವು ಇವತ್ತು ಕ್ರಿಯಾಕ್ಟಿವ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಮೀಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಿದ್ವಿ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಹಾನರ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಸೊ ಇನ್ನ ಮೈಕ್ರೋ ಮೈಕ್ರೋ ಬಯಾಲಜಿ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮೈಕ್ರೋಮ್ಸ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಇನ್ನಷ್ಟು ವಿಷಯ ತಿಳಿಯೋಣ ಸೊ ಒನ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಸ್ ಶಿಶುಪಾಲ್ ಸರ್ ವೆಲ್ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಗಣೇಶ್ ಸರ್ ಟು ಯು shall i start yes sir yes sir yeah okay thank you creative group for uh, providing me a platform to interact with the youngsters here i will be sharing some of the information regarding microorganisms to begin with and then uh, give special emphasis on human microbiome i am sure most of you know what microorganisms are as the term itself indicates the organisms which are smaller in size smaller in size means how small it should be then it should not be visible for the naked eye let us see some of the important aspects of uh, microorganisms and later i will take you into the human micro biome i am sharing my slides i hope it is visible yes sir so i welcome you all for this uh, presentation where i will be dealing with the microorganisms how they influence us and what are their role so this is our university campus in davangere 73 acres campus a green lush green campus where the the first building here the, with the dome is the bioscience block where i work the topic which i have chosen as mentioned earlier is human microbiome human microbiome refers to human microbiota microorganisms associated with the human beings you all know the microorganisms evolved first on this biosphere there are different uh, atmospheric conditions different ecological conditions in planet earth but planet earth is considered as biosphere because living organisms are present here let the discussion continue whether mars is having water whether mars is suitable for living organisms whether microorganisms are there in other planets whether you can go uh, for honeymoon on moon let the discussion debate continue but what is proven conclusively is the planet earth is having organisms microorganisms are the one which first evolved in the planet earth later provided opportunity to evolve different animals plants including human beings so the topic which i have to chosen is human microbiome but i am showing uh, our ancestors here it is not uh, i am not talking on evolution here mainly but this is to depict your mood if my lecture is getting bored some of you may think of the from your left hand side the first monkey when this gets over some of you who have worked today much they may get into the afternoon nap like the third monkey there or somebody may get into deep sleep as the the fourth monkey there but i am sure the topic is uh, should generate curiosity i hope i said i hope i will be able to keep you in the mood of this second monkey focused on my lecture so when we talk about microorganisms there are unicellular organisms multicellular organisms but most of them are not visible to naked eye that we will be considering it as microorganisms so living organisms like bacteria protozoa fungi algae cyanobacteria and others are being considered under microbial diversity whereas if you consider the infectious agents like viruses viroids and prions they are not organisms but infectious agents but being considered under microorganisms so extensive diversity appears in microbial world which includes many different forms starting from an infectious agent like a virus to that of the unicellular bacteria and then to the multicellular fungi and other organisms so this is the world of its own kind initially botanists and zoologists felt only the plants and animals respectively are the organisms existing in this earth 
because they were able to see plants starting from a small grass to a big tree at the same time small ant to big elephant but later uh, as the science progressed it was possible to see many organisms with the aid of microscope which resulted in understanding many more forms of microorganisms and which contributed much for our present day understanding people always think of space is the final frontier of research so if you ask a high school going kid what he wants to be then he will say he wants to be an astronomer he wants to look into the sky he wants to be participating in satellite programs but let us see whether the space research is of extraordinary nature there is an estimate i said estimate because we do climb aganita tara but there is an estimate 50 billion galaxies 50 billion galaxies present in the universe comprising of 10 to the power of 21 stars so this is a rough estimate of number of galaxies and stars present in the universe so when i say universe it is so so big uh, involving so many stars like sun is a star and there are many other bigger stars than sun so there are hundreds and thousands of stars amounting for an estimate of 10 to the power of 21 but look at the number of microorganisms 10 to the power of 31 microorganisms only in this planet earth because of their small size they can have more number being present comprising 2 to 3 billion species so number of microorganisms are present in planet earth is number is much more than the number of stars in the universe 10 to the power of 21 stars in the universe 10 to the power of 31 microorganisms in the earth itself one such organism a single celled bacterium called pelagiobacter ubic this bacterium is found in sargasso sea usa and a most abundant organism found in a water body and its population size is 2.4 into 10 to the power of 28 cells you know bacteria are single celled organisms and this one 2.4 into 10 to the power of 28 cells the population size if you take consider the human beings all around the world 6 into 10 to the power of 9 human beings and number of galaxies in the universe 5 into 10 to the power of 10 50 billion galaxies i did mention earlier so compared to all human beings on the earth then all galaxies in the universe this one organism outnumber all of them that is one of the unique feature of microorganisms being smallest possible size they outnumber all other organisms craig venter one of the scientist went for a, an expedition in sargasso sea and collected the sea water samples and analyzed them for the presence of organisms he found 1800 new microbial species resulting in 1.2 million new genetic se gene sequences so you know microorganisms are also made up of dna and the dna comprises several uh, genes and the total collection of the genes present in an organism is referred as genome 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 analysis human genome plant genome coconut genome bacteria e coli genome like that the total genetic component of an organism is considered as genome total proteins present in an organism being considered as proteome total proteins present in a organism considered as proteome and total microorganism present in an any organism is considered as microbiome for example animal microbiome dog microbiome cat microbiome human microbiome like that plant microbiome coconut microbiome groundnut microbiome so among the organisms which will be uh, distributed in different other organisms so they will be considered to in total as microbiome we talk about uh, ecosystem evergreen forest uh, fresh water ecosystem or sea water salt water ecosystem like that aquatic ecosystem desert evergreen forest deciduous forest like that but what we am i am going to concentrate today is your own ecosystem what i mean by your own ecosystem we generally feel i am part of the ecosystem so physical appearance of a human being along with the physical world we is considered as an ecosystem but 
today i am going to highlight some of the important aspects of your inner ecosystem that means as a human being you provide opportunity for many organisms to live with you many organisms to live with you since they are microscopic they are not visible and scientists have explored human being as an ecosystem to know what are the microorganisms present and that makes the microbiome concept so genome analysis is the genetic analysis referred as genomics then proteomics protein analysis now microbiologists have encountered hundreds and thousands of organisms in your body comprising the microbiome so there is a book published in 2019 by scientific american uh, mentioning about different aspects of human microbiome the your inner ecosystem the microbiology as such is an young science compared to physics concepts mathematical uh, calculations it is an young science the first though microorganisms are much older than us they are our great ancestors because they evolved first on this biosphere but their knowledge came only to uh, limelight after anton van leeuwenhoek who was a cloth merchant was able to see the different samples obtained like soil extract uh, pond water and things like that with a primitive microscope what he had he had here on the right side of your screen so a primitive microscope where he saw many organisms moving around because of their smaller size he could not consider them as animals but he called them as animalcules animalcules and he also wrote to through his letters his observations to royal society of london explaining what he saw he drew pictures of organisms after seeing the samples through the microscope he used teeth scum to see uh, thousands of organisms moving around so initial microbiome concept microbiology concept got originated from anton van leeuwenhoek and through his all scientific letters written to royal society of london made us possible to see microorganisms when i say microorganisms it should not be seen by naked eye then how big or how small it should be if you take a scale of 1 cm 1 cm is divided into 10 mm so each line you can see separately within 1 mm if you place five lines with careful lines that means 1 mm is divided into five divisions each corresponding to 0.2 mm 0.2 mm you will be able to see but you cannot place distinct lines 10 lines there so 0.2 mm is the resolution power resolving power of human eye if anything below this you cannot see for example the surrounding air is having hundreds of organisms we are unable to see them but we will be able to culture many of them and observe under microscope to study their characteristics so microorganisms are much older to us but their study started after anton van leeuwenhoek found the microscope to see them magnify them using the lenses so there are various microscopes evolved over a period of time you can see the similarity these are all and uh, antique pieces now but you can see the mirror the objective lens the eyepiece lens and uh, evolution of microscope i am being shown showing in one picture later today we have something like this a binocular research microscope which can magnify 1000 times a light microscope can magnif magnify maximum of 1000 times an organism so we will be able to see bacteria fungi protozoa and others through this microscope but later an electron microscope like uh, transmission electron microscope here which can magnify to 1.5 lakhs times so you are able to see viruses and others which are very small which cannot be seen by uh, ordinary microscope but it can be seen by electron microscope that's why viruses are considered as ultra microscopic so you need an electron microscope to see them so microbiologists who are looking at into the organisms are considered as paparazis you know paparazzi the queen diana she was going somewhere and the people followed her the photographers videographers who will be peeping into personal life of others are considered as paparazzis 
So as far as microorganisms are considered, we are paparazzis because through microscope, we are peeping into personal life of them. Microorganisms are invisible invaders and amazing allies. If you see a TV advertisement, they would put always microorganisms, for example, life by soap, they will show microorganisms as ketano. But not necessary, every organism is a pathogen. Microorganisms are present in us, inside, outside, everywhere, you will see later. So, <clears throat> but all of them are not pathogenic. Only few of them, countable number of them are pathogenic, pathogens, pathos, diseased condition, gens responsible for. So an organism responsible for a diseased condition is called as pathogen. Then what is disease? Disease. You are not in ease. As soon as you get up in the morning, one nose is blocked or there is an headache or there is a constipation or loose motion. So some of these diseases are caused by microorganisms collectively referred as infectious diseases. There are other disorders like diabetes, allergy, asthma. They are all disorders not due to infectious agents. So we have several diseases, but millions of organisms you have making up human microbiome. Mother's womb is the best place where there are no microorganisms. As soon as the child travels in the genital tract, child is showered with microorganisms. The ayah or nurse or doctor, whoever lifts you up, will be blessing you with microorganisms. First ounce of air, which enters into the nostril of the child will be carrying the microorganisms. First piece of, uh, first drop of water the child drinks will be carrying the microorganisms. First piece of food the child eats will be carrying the microorganisms. So as soon as you are born in this world, you are showered with microorganisms. How long? How long? Up to death, even after death. Every molecule of yours is enjoyed and experienced by microorganisms. That means the microorganisms are ubiquitous, sarvantriyami, right? They are present everywhere, everywhere, water, air, soil, everywhere they are present. Then I generally consider microorganisms as God. As far as I am concerned, microorganisms are gods for me because, because of them I am getting my salary. I am taking care of my family, right? But let apart that, if you, if you consider any characteristics of the God, it is being shown by microorganisms. God cannot be seen. Microorganisms cannot be seen. God exists in different forms. Microorganisms exist in form. God is the one who decides how you have to live when you have to die. Microorganisms are the one who decide how you have to live when you have to die. So that being the case, microorganisms must be gods. You will know in future, in today's lecture, what are the different types of organisms to begin with and then how they are involved in human health benefits as well as some of the uh, harmful effects. Microbes in the human body, collectively referred as microbiome, keeps us healthy, dealing with immunity, the, your defense mechanisms, child development, you will be surprised, I will show you with the proof later, the food selection, the type of food you eat is dependent on the type of organisms you carry, then bone density regulation and even longevity, your age is also dependent on the microorganisms you carry. Nobody should feel alone in this world because starting from your birth up to death, you have been followed by sincerely by microorganisms. You, your parents cannot assure you that they will be with you until your death. You cannot assure your children or friend or husband or wife that you will be with them all along. But believe me, microorganisms are there all along with you. I am reminded of a story of Kanakadasa who gave banana to the students and asked them to go and eat where there is uh, nobody. So somebody went to a room, ate the uh, God. One student did not eat. He said, God is there everywhere. If I were to be in the place of Kanakadasa, I would have given a banana to ask uh, students to go and eat where there are no microorganisms and it is not possible. So like God being everywhere, microorganisms are there everywhere and microbiomes he refers to microorganisms present in the human body.
body's microbial population may contribute conditions as diverse as cancer, depression, obesity, bowel syndrome, irrit irritable bowel syndrome, psoriasis, bad breath, bad odor. I'm sure most of you, when you sit with a one or the other person, he may stink badly, right? It could be because of the contribution of microbiome associated with him. Then there are microbiome related disorders, which I will be able to touch upon a little later. So look at the human microbiome, full of organisms. I did mention how do you get organisms, starting from your mother to the air, water, food, what you eat, you will be carried with the organisms and many of them will like you and be present associated with you inside and outside. Look at the upper respiratory tract. From nose to lungs, 600 plus species have been identified. On your skin, 1000 species have been identified. Then in the urinogenital tract, 60 plus species have been identified. In the intestine, the gut microbiome, we call it as later. Later, I will show you in the intestine, the gut microbiome, the place within the human being, each place may harbor different organisms. 500 to 1000 organisms are there in your intestine. And the stomach, where the acid is there, uh, 25 species have been identified. This number may vary from one individual to another individual, one place to another place, depending on the place you live, the food the habits, the lifestyle, the genetic system of yours, the composition may vary. And hence, they are trying to analyze the total microorganisms present in a human being as a human microbiome project. When I say microorganisms, this one will give you an idea how roughly microorganisms differ. For example, a human cell, human cell may measure up to 100 micrometers. Whereas a bacterium, 1 micrometer to 5 micrometers, a mitochondria, 1 micrometer to 0.5 micrometer, whereas DNA is in nanometer. So as far as measurement is concerned, we calculate atomic sizes in nanometer or Armstrong, then molecules like DNA, RNA or protein in nanometers. Then you have bacteriophage viruses in nanometers again, for example, 400 pox viruses. 400 nanometers, the tobacco mosaic virus, 300 nanometers, like that. Then you have RBCs. So different sizes, as you see, the number human body may is expected to contain thousands of organisms, as I showed. But what is interesting, as a human being, 25% is only human cells. But other rest of the 67% of our body contains bacteria the unicellular prokaryotic organisms. Then another 8% of the in, uh, components are belongs to fungi, shilindra. So what I mean they hear is, I am not alone. I have been harbored and our cells are only 25%. Rest of the 75% uh, belongs to microorganisms. Even as a single individual, you are harboring thousands of organisms. And 10 to the power of 13 human cells are there, 10 to the power of 14 or so microbial cells are there. The number of bacteria present in one gram of the human feces range up to 10 to the power of 11 bacteria. So you can imagine how many organisms you are supporting. The microorganism is always right. You will be surprised to listen to this statement. The microorganism is your friend, a sensitive partner. You use life by soap, 99.5% of the microorganisms you use think that you have removed. The only 0.5% is retained. By the time my lecture is over, they are back on you. So one of the important characteristics of the organisms, they are very small in size, invisible to naked eye. Then you need a microscope. The second next parameter is their unique ability of reproducing. They reproduce so fast that they will be back by the time my lecture is over. And interestingly, there are no stupid organisms. I have given only few characters of the microorganisms. If you look at the functions of the microorganisms, they are remarkable. For example, if I ask you if microorganisms are not there, what will happen? 
the milk will not get converted into curd. That is one microbial function. Then dosa will not have holes. Idli will not be smooth. Bread will not be smooth. Like that, these are all day-to-day -day happenings which you are seeing. Some people who drink alcoholic beverages, if microorganisms are not there, alcoholic beverages will not be there. But in a larger perspective, I am sure all of you know biogeochemical cycle. The producers, different levels of consumers, and one important component of biogeochemical cycle is the decomposition. I did mention earlier, every molecule of yours is enjoyed, experienced by microorganisms. When the organic molecules are converted into inorganic elements and that are recycled through plants. So, biogeochemical cycle, the major role of microorganisms is in decomposition. If microorganisms are not there, decomposition stops, biogeochemical cycle will not be complete. What will happen? When Shishupala dies, his body will be intact. When a leaf falls from a tree, it will be in, in, intact. I am sure those who have studied biology, you know, nothing is coming from a ex extraterrestrial uh, portion. Everything here is recycled. The organic molecules get converted into inorganic elements and those inorganic elements are again used to synthesize organic molecules. So, biogeochemical cycle stops. If microorganisms are not there, no new life can come after few years. Dinosaurs are there, uh, were there, but still we are there. Tomorrow, tiger may not be there, but we will be there. If microorganisms are not there, nobody will be there. Why I did mention there are no stupid microorganisms? Because microorganisms do a perfect job in their own context. You may think that they are pathogenic, but only for their survival, they have become pathogenic. Only few of them. A sensitive partner, you put a uh, sanitizer on your hand, you are killing so many organisms. But when you touch any other so place, you will be getting those organisms back on your hands. So they are sensitive partner. They are present with you all along. Microorganisms can and will do anything. They are much smarter. You will see how smart they are, wiser and more energetic. For example, a swimming pool of milk is made and you are alone to may, uh, made to swim there. You cannot convert milk into curd, what microorganisms does. So they are much energetic than chemist and engineer. Overnight, idli will become uh, batter and it will result in smoothness. Fermentation process is over, which you cannot do. No chemist can uh, replace fermentation process. Look at the energy. You will uh, refer them as ketano, right? The microscopic organisms are very inferior. They are considered as ketano or uh, not seen. They are negligible inferior in their individual energy. When you compare to lion or elephant, if you keep elephant in front of a child, you will see them astonishingly. But because the child cannot see the microorganisms, you will be not be knowing. But in their united influence, the microorganisms are far more important than all these animals. They can kill a lion. They can kill an elephant. So teamwork need to be learned from microorganisms. I'll just touch upon a few diseases. For example, gingivitis, one of the most common problems. I am sure most of you had one or the other teeth cavities, teeth problems. Then you go to a dentist and it, uh, they will give uh, uh, medicines, they will clean your teeth and replace if it is a uh, root canal treatment and things like that. But it is interesting for you to note. You all look at America, USA for the best hygienic conditions, best of the toothpaste, best of the brush, and you think that they don't have. I have obtained an information from Guinness Book of World Records. Most commonest non-contagious disease is gingivitis, which afflicts some 80% of the US population. In the United States of America, 80% of the people suffer from this teeth problem, gingivitis. The next sentence is difficult to believe. In Great Britain, 13% of the people have lost all their teeth before reaching 21 years. If you are losing all your teeth before 21 years, who is going to marry you, right? So 13%, you need to believe this because this information is obtained from Guinness Book of World Records. But I'm sure you have seen some of your grandparents having all the 32 
teeth intact. So during their lifetime, few completely escape its effects. So oral microbiome, oral microbiome. So site specific microbiome. People with the type of food habit, the genetic system, the personal hygiene, public hygiene, all contributes for the human microbiome. The other common problem is the common cold. One of the major symptoms is the running nose. And this lady has found running nose, a running tissue, a easy to solve the problem. But when you sneeze, when you get a cold, you sneeze, you put across your nasal secretion into the air at a high speed. They become droplet nuclei, technically referred as droplet nuclei. When it gets exposed to the air, it gets dried up, carrying the virus particle to others. Similarly, the coronavirus. So the common cold viruses are considered as rhinoviruses. What is the problem? In one day, 1,37,000 Americans stay at home because uh, they have a cold. 1,64,000 children stay home from school because they have the cold. What about India? We don't uh, lose our leave for uh, common cold. We go to university, we go to colleges, we go to our workplace, spread across the virus. Fortunately, the common cold virus is a self-limiting disease. By a week's time, you will be able to tolerate because of the powerful immunity you have. Common cold virus are caused by rhinoviruses, rhinoceros, an animal having horn on the nose, the rhinovirus, virus causing problem to the nose, that is the running nose or common cold. They are single-stranded RNA viruses. And you feel that somebody sneezed in front of you and you got the cold. Or you are with a friend who has got suffering from the cold. Not necessary. Wherever you go, for example, rhinoviruses can survive on household objects for up to three days retaining the infectivity. That means somebody has put the nasal secretion in a film theater. Even after three days, they are infective. They are infective. So it is extremely important. Not necessary that somebody who in front of you sneezes and you get the infection. You may get common cold virus infection anywhere. The other viral uh, infection is the chicken pox. I'm sure most of the you would have had this experience in your childhood days. The, when this virus infects, the skin rashes appear, the small and big. Uh, so in Kannada, it is called as Amma, Dada, Doddamma, Sandamma. They, people do refer it in different ways. And after a week or 10 days, all the skin gets dried up and becomes a powder. And when you go and sit to next to a child in a school, the skin powder carrying the virus particle will be nailed by the other friends and they will get the chickenpox infection. And it is also a self-limiting disease. After a 15 days or so, you suffer and you will get rid of. So you, you get develop immunity for that virus. But interestingly, virus stays in our body long, long time. Now, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. When you are under psychological stress, when you are under steroid treatments, when your immunity is coming down, when one person gets infected with HIV, the chickenpox virus expresses as herpes zoster. Sarpa Suttu, Sarpa Hunnu, Harpis Zusta. So it is nothing to do with the cobra. It is actually the chickenpox virus in children will be expressing later in adults as Harpis Zusta. There are many other herpes viruses like oral herpes, genital herpes and things like that. Mumps is another problem. Then you have other group of organisms like Plasmodium belonging to the group Protozoa causes malaria. In one day, four people in USA discover that they have malaria. And in Plasmodium, 50 species are there. Out of them, only four, Plasmodium falciparum, P. vivax, P. malaria, and P. O. whale are responsible for malaria. Little more serious diseases. In one day, 2,700 Americans discover that they have gonorrhea. 200 discover that they have syphilis. Both of these are sexually transmitted bacterial diseases. Gonorrhea is caused by Neisseria gonorrhea and syphilis is caused by Treponema pallida. What about India? In India, we don't discuss about sex, but we do practice. And there may be many infections, but not being told. So in case of gonorrhea, 
the gonorrhea infected mother can carry the organism neisseria gonorrhea to the child during delivery and the child can get infected by the bacteria the syphilis at the tertiary level could be resulting in such a symptoms it is important for you to be aware and many adolescent uh, uh, youngsters here should be careful about sexually transmitted diseases the other nematode filaria filariasis ane kalu roga or elephantiasis it is caused by witchery of bancroft i have just picked up a viral disease a bacterial disease a helminthes you have tapeworm hookworm and others causing several diseases but the number of organisms which i showed earlier is in terms of crores but you suffer from only countable number that means good organisms are more in number bad organisms or pathogenic organisms are less in number you go to a doctor for a problem and you may invite other problems this is called hospital acquired infections in one day 7000 hospital patients become infected with an illness other than the one that sent them to the hospital that means you go to a hospital where many patients are there they will be contributing for the hospital environment and there is a chance that you get exposed to such organisms these are technically referred as nosocomial infections air if i prepare a nutrient medium for whatever the nutrient medium required for the growth of the organisms like sugar nitrogen and others and expose it to air you can see many colonies colonies are group of similar individuals living together right so you have bacteria and fungi growing on the plate the food what we eat may be contaminated with many other like here the bread has been sandwiched along with a rat so many other food gets contaminated whether you are vegetarian or non vegetarian the bacterium like salmonella are there food poisoning bacteria how many of them can be hold in a place for example this is a pin tip the small pin tip this is a scanning electron micrograph showing bacteria on the surface so lowest magnification on your left corner then the next one is little more magnified further magnified and you can see rod shaped bacteria being there interestingly young children normal microflora of the skin contain wider variety of species than an adult how many of them are there each square centimeter of the skin hosts an average of 100000 that means 1 lakh organisms they reproduce so quickly that their population is restored within hours i did mention you had uh, morning bath some people will have every day some people have once in three days once in a week irrespective of which soap you use whether you use detol or life boy or peers or any other the microorganisms will be back on you look at the way the organisms bacteria divide this is a time lapse video showing you the level of bacterial division uh, every 20 minutes the bacterial cell becomes 2 2 to 4 4 8 16 like that 64 128 so every 20 minutes they multiply so even if one bacterium is there within hours it will become millions of bacteria that's why when you eat when you sleep and get up in the morning your body your boy your oral cavity will be full of organisms and hence you start uh, giving bad odor there is an estimate given by post gate one cell of e coli escherichia coli which is a normal colon organism present in your intestine if sufficient wood food were available produce a mass of bacteria greater than the mass of earth in 3 days oh unbelievable this is an estimate even if you consider if it is 50% true in 6 days you will be able to get another glow but in nature it is not happening nature has got its own control mechanisms other organisms are there competing with the for food the other organisms are producing back antibiotics and hence the organism is in control but remarkable ability of microorganisms to reproduce so fast that they have succeeded in covering all corners of the world at the same time they are very useful for genetic studies because their generation time is short you can see which gene is expressed 
uh, how soon? So by studying many generations. Look into this different uh, viruses and then uh, other organisms. Viruses are nucleoproteins, nucleic acid covered with a coat protein. One of the initial viral study was with the tobacco mosaic virus. So it is an RNA virus. RNA is the genetic material covered with the protein coat. You have polio virus, then you have rabies virus, herpes, HIV, corona, like that. Different viruses are there. All the viruses are made up of nucleoprotein, nucleic acid covered with a protein coat. There are animal infecting uh, viruses. They need a host. They are outside the cell. They are non-living. Inside the host cell, they are able to multiply. That means reproduce. So they don't require any food as such. They don't require any nutrients, but they have only one ability to multiply, produce uh, the similar uh, in more in number. So they have nucleic acid covered with a protein coat. They can infect bacteria, bacteriophages like this. They can infect fungi, mycoviruses. They can infect algae. So many different forms of viruses can infect our other cellular organisms. You have the other related group, viroids, only RNA molecule causing plant diseases. Then you have prion, your own protein, structurally modified, resulting in transmissible spongiform encephalopathy. For example, mad cow disease, Crutzfeldt Jacob disease, Kuru, uh, all these crepe in sheep. So these diseases are caused by a structurally abnormal protein called prion protein. Look at the other cellular organisms like bacteria. They belong to uh, prokaryotes. This is a uh, smartphone the placed on the nutrient medium. You can see number of colonies. Colony refers to group of individuals living together. So this is a bacterial culture plate shows different colonies of organisms. When we talk about colonies of the organisms, we look at different parameters like size of the colony, color of the colony, margin of the colony, and the texture of the colony, things like that. One of my research students isolated 88 different type of bacteria. These Here it is 26 different bacteria isolated from tomato is being shown here. You can see various shapes of the colony, the color of the colony, sizes of the colony, which makes one of the distinguishing character of the bacterial genera. Some bacteria like Serratia marcinins produce pigments. They are themselves red colored compounds. They are being produced. This is one of the bacterium present in soil. Based on the cell wall structure, you know, bacterial cells have got a cell wall. Cell wall is made up of a polysaccharide, peptidoglycan. And peptidoglycan, if the peptidoglycan layer is thick, then uh, it is considered as gram positive organism. If the peptidoglycan is thin, then it is considered as gram-negative organism. There are other structures, flagella being present, uh, the plasmid is being present, cell membrane, all these are being taken into consideration in bacteriology, study of bacteria. Shape of the bacteria, some of them are rod-shaped, some of them are round or cocci, then they can get arranged like a uh, cluster of grapes, they can arrange in a sequence, the cellular arrangement and cell shape is important for identification of bacteria. Some of them produce uh, lipopolysaccharide as their surrounding, referred as capsule. Some do produce seed-like structures, spore, endospore. Within the cell, they, uh, they produce spores, which can make them survive under unfavorable conditions. The position of the endospore may vary from one organism to another organism. Some bacteria like mycobacterium tuberculosis are acid resistant in the sense the sputum is smeared onto a slide and after staining the cells, if you put acid and alcohol, the color won't go. Such bacteria are referred as acid fast bacilli. There are bacteria which can be photosynthetic. In fact, all our trees and other things are present only in 29% of the land what we have. Rest of the 71% is water, where you have these blue-green cyanobacteria, blue-green bacteria. 
like limbia spirulina anabina oscillatoria they contribute for the oxygen what we have today bacteria some of them are motile using flagella you can see the under a microscope if you see those organisms they will be moving like this the other organisms can move like this spiral shaped bacteria smallest bacterium is mycoplasma genitalium which is present in genital tract of monkeys the one of the biggest organism is eupolopisium fichelsoni which is size is 700 micrometers you will be able to see to the naked eye the biggest bacterium so far known is thiomarganeta namibiensis which can be measured uh, measuring up to 750 micrometers that is 0.75 mm you will be able to see to the naked eye but all other characteristics of this bacterium is prokaryotic nature and hence grouped under microbacteria there are bacteria which carry magnetic substances using earth's magnetic field they will be able to use the magnet present them in the form of magnetosomes there are bacteria which shows bioluminescence i am sure all of you know firefly the insect which emits the light there are bacteria which can emit the light bacterial bioluminescence these bioluminescent bacteria are in symbiotic relationship with the deep sea organisms like here bacterial squid it is having vibrio fishery species the shiningness of the animal in the sea is because of the presence of symbiotic bacteria if you look into the all other algae they are also groups of microorganisms you have uh, unicellular like chlamydosomonas lemonas diatoms filamentous algae uh, various number and sizes they are available and interestingly some biosin luminescent algae are also present like pyrocystis in the this is in a sea beach near uh, nitte the surat kal showing bioluminescent algae growing coming to the other group fungi you have whenever you think of fungi or boost cylindra you think of immediately the bread mold there are three different morphological forms of fungi one is unicellular yeast the other is filamentous fungi like aspergillus the third one is mushrooms the yeast colonies are different when you observe grow them and observe the plate and in within the microscopic observation if you make some of them are round shaped some of them are oval some will be showing the budding so this is yeast budding showing the reproductive ability of the organism and filamentous fungi like aspergillus or penicillium they are producers of antibiotics as well as enzymes required for our food industry and other industries you must have tasted bitter tasted groundnut is because of the presence of these fungi aspergillus aspergillus flavus the same organism contaminates the maize also produces aflatoxin which is carcinogenic and one of the agriculturally important organism is trichoderma which is used as a biocontrol agent in agriculture one of my student is working on pigments from fungi we are looking for natural pigments from fungi for benefit of mankind then the other group is mushroom mushrooms are na- visible for naked eye but their original thallus as you can see here hidden inside the soil or a dead wood like in the form of hyphae or the mycelium and the only the fruiting body is seen and hence the thallus is microscopic it is being considered under microbiology look at the diversity the color size pattern uh, the diversity of mushrooms found on this earth coming to protozoa you have famous organism amoeba paramecium and in one pond water we were able to get paramecium you just bring pond water and observe under microscope you will be able to see this is the video made by us in indian institute of science campus taking a pond water you can see uh, paramecium moving with the cilia in pond water you will be able to see some of the rotifers like this you will see in a pond water phytoplanktons photosynthetic organisms microscopic organisms zooplanktons which feed on other 
this is a rotifer feeding on the phytoplanktons the body is so uh, clear and you will be able to see the internal organ there the heart is beating and the uh, organism is sucking the food particles from water so now i have given you an idea of what are viruses what are bacteria fungi protozoa algae and so many where do they you find in case of they are found in nature but in case of human being what we find is the human microbiome so in mouth the oral microbiome firmicutes proteobacteria bacteriodactyls actinobacteria and others are seen in gut then again different species of actinobacteria are seen enterobacteria are seen then in vagina lactobacilli you will find on skin actinobacteria are found in the respiratory tract uh, proteobacteria are found so different group of organisms found on the same individual in different organs surviving there adapting there reproducing there then if you take only skin microbiome human microbiome is a larger uh, topic where you have all organisms found on the human beings then you can subdivide like specialization oral microbiome microorganisms present in your mouth cavity skin microbiome you have series of organisms found then gut microbiome interestingly i came across human milk microbiome the mother when she gives me uh, breast milk to the child the infant will be sucking the milk there along with the nutrients present in the mother milk there are many organisms found on her breast and others will be getting easily entry into the uh, child and which decides the proper development of the child at the same time other health related issues also so mental development is related to human microbiome child development is related to human microbiome that's why breast milk will be providing not only nutrients an ideal number of organisms required for the proper development of the child this is obtained from a nutrient journal uh, published just now in 2022 then how do we isolate these organisms there are many approaches you can get uh, the swabs from different places and grow them regular culturing of the organisms the other is the genetic analysis by isolating the metagenome approach metagenome refers to the sample is directly used for dna isolation and analysis so genomic dna is isolated analyzed with the computers and uh, different molecular techniques and it is possible genomic approach for human microbiome then gut microbiota there are a lot of substances you eat first of all you some may eat morning dosa others may eat idli and day every day you will be differing and microorganisms present in your gut are in confusion what you eat but they are essential in order to absorb all the nutrients associated you yourself doesn't have digestive capacity to uh, take off all the nutrients from the food what you eat gut microbiota or gut microbiome microorganisms present in your intestine will help like post nutrition nutrition required some of the vitamins produced by them are necessary for you maintain development of the immune system by keeping active immune system you will be able to get naturally immunized to many organisms present in you and hence your immune system will be active and it helps in colonization of a pathogen and offers resistance at the same time gut microorganisms may also influence your health like cardiovascular diseases your heart problems may be associated with the gut microorganisms emerging infectious diseases carcinogenic metabolic toxins and the immune re response your bowel movement some people will have constipation some people may have uh, the farting bad smelling for or some people may have loose motion all these are associated with the gut microorganisms or what we call gut microbiome in various ways the gut microbiome will influence look at the positive effects the protection and the clearance from the pathogen invasion the good bacteria present in your intestine will be competing with other organisms 
and they may suppress pathogenic organisms. Then brain development and behavior is also associated with the uh, gut microbiome. So that is an interesting development. Only from the past two, three years, the information is getting generated that gut microbiome is able to control your brain development. Helps in the immune system, as I mentioned earlier, it will improve your natural immunity to infectious agents and basic role of xenobiotics. Um, uh, de degradation, you are eating pesticide contaminated food, the microorganisms present will be able to degrade some of them. At the same time, help get to get the nutrients associated with the food what you eat. At the same time, the gut microbiome imbalance in that what we refer as dysbiosis, symbiosis living together, dysbiosis, destruction of the gut microbiome may have a negative effect like gastrointestinal disorders, colon cancer, the metabolic syndrome, obesity and diabetes. Gut-brain axis, I did mention, you have so many factors influencing like food intake, conjunctive behavior, Parkinson's disease, happiness, stress, social interaction, all these will be influencing you. So when sometimes when you eat something good, which you will be feeling happy, Sometimes you will be stressed upon because of the gut-brain axis. What you eat and how gut microorganisms interact with that will be helping you in swinging your moods. Then microbiota present in your gut and dys dysbiosis. Dysbiosis is imbalance in the gut microbiota. Results in liver disease, chronic kidney disease, brain disorders, diabetes and so many. So then what is the treatment? How you can overcome? How you can maintain the gut? By eating healthy food. Healthy food refers to a natural food. Uh, so that you will get the natural components present in your intestine, which will be able to improve upon your gut bacteria. So there are various ways of managing it using live biotherapeutic products, then uh, engineered bacteria, are probiotics. Probiotics are the organisms which favor your life. Antibiotics against life. Probiotic for life. So organisms, for example, you would see the yogurt containing probiotic bacteria, useful bacteria. Or whenever you have a stomach upset, doctor may advise you to take curd. So you will be installing good bacteria there. To influence the gut immunity, there is an interesting development took place a decade back. 2012, an England doctor managed to do a thing which you will never accept. Like the patient having diarrhea, loose motion, went to a doctor and he gave antibiotics as usual. But none of the antibiotics worked. Later, the patient's stool examination, the feces examination, provided him indication that Clostridium difficile, Clostridium difficile, an organism being present which is resistant to many of the antibiotics in the stomach of the patient. Then the doctor thought, why not put healthy bacteria there? He invited a donor and obtained feces. Please remember, obtained feces from a healthy individual, mixed in water, making a mix and then filtering it and pouring that feces extract into the patient's mouth and the doctor said it is disgusting to put poo of one individual to another individual but this is now called fecal microbiota transplantation you never imagine that you can eat a feces of others but this has been established and it is helpful now a poo bank cuckus bank like your blood bank sperm bank uh, money bank like that poo bank is established nice cream, chocolate, brown color, poo. I'm not joking. You have fecal microbiota stored in poo, poo bank. And whenever the patient is there, look at the ingredients, human feces filtered and kept ready. The, when the patient is available, it will be poured. I'm not joking. This was the, one of the articles published in 2015. The, now I have got articles even in 2022 where a poo bank is established. Fecal microbiota transplantation, expanding horizons of Clostridium difficile infection. By putting useful bacteria, you will be able to suppress Clostridium difficile 
you may feel bad to eat feces of others but tomorrow a capsule may come fit to make you then you will never know what it is there now they are working out with good bacteria they have isolated six plus species of bacteria and making them in a composition so stool bank was started in 2018 with the donors and the donation processed 4271 samples for fecal microbiota transplantation the pay, uh, healthy individual is brought into the clinic his feces is collected tested for pathogenic organisms and the rest of the organisms if found suitable will be used for giving it to the patients enrolled enrolled donor like a blood donor stool donor will work for 5.8 months uh, by giving every day his feces then for such who bank orders are being received from hospital and physicians in india it is yet to be realized open bio pays to the donor for one batch of feces 40 dollars one batch of feces 40 dollars this is obtained from frontiers journal stool banking for fecal microbiota transplantation and how the bank has to get operated how long it can be stored all that they are working now how the fecal microbiota helps so the infected individual will have disbalance in his stomach the intestine he will have loose motion clostridium difficile is multiplying without getting disturbed by antibiotics then feces from the donor containing useful bacteria being dispensed into the intestine will allow a competition the fecal bacteria useful bacteria compete with the clostridium dif difficile and finally ends up removing the clostridium difficile and good bacteria get sustained in the patient so what did i say human microbiome how many organisms are there where they are located how they will influence how your stomach bacteria influence your uh, health and how you need to maintain and including the latest method of using fecal microorganisms for the treatment of uh, patients with clostridium difficile that means what you have thousands of organisms on you to keep yourself healthy you need to maintain certain uh, levels of lifestyle so if you look into the microbial world infectious agents viruses viroids and prions the living organisms like bacteria unicellular prokaryotes and among eukaryotes you have algae protozoa fungi and elementis so many organisms are there and we don't know what is our under our feet and we are looking what is there in mars instead of how many of them are there microorganism an estimated uh, number of algae 350000 and described is only around 40000 the microorganisms algae are known only 5% of fungi are known only 1% of viruses are known only 0.1% of the bacteria are known so known only so many uh, unknown that's why i did mention microbiology is an ancient science where the known aspects are very less unknown 99% of the uh, viruses are not known so we are yet to study all of them and hence microbiology contributes not only for human health but also for the whole health of the biosphere if all other species get destroyed microorganisms know how to survive but instead of understanding nature what we are doing we are producing our own we are interested in increasing our population and those who are not getting will also follow the test tube babies and others so human population is increasing we are interfering with nature we are making many other species endangered and extinct if you are not part of the nature if you are selfish if you are not a part of nature it will be sunset for you if you are part of nature and live with nature create an ecosystem for you and others it will be sunrise for you i hope i have given a overview of microorganisms and then uh, microorganisms associated with the human beings and uh, if there are any imbalances how to take care and i hope the message is very clear you we live with the nature and natural foods are always helpful for you to improve good number of organisms in you rather than pathogenic organisms 
Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I will make a sincere attempt to answer. Here is my number and my email for you to contact later. Thank you very much. Thanks to, to the organizers also. Thank you, Shishupal, sir. It's uh, uh, very interesting and uh, <laughs> we should know all these things. Uh, for a common man should know uh, all these things. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, we are welcome uh, for the questions. So before that, I want to ask, uh, uh, what are the scopes uh, in this field? Uh, uh, job opportunities are uh, any education field? Just uh, give a brief in. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Micro, as I mentioned, microbiology is such a vast field. You have in medical field, one can become a medical diagnostician. You know, importance of COVID uh, detection. Early detection was important. So COVID detection or blood borne infection area detection or antibiotic sensitivity. So in a medical laboratory, microbiologists are being appointed based on their qualification and exposure, they will be appointed. Then companies like all biotechnology companies, whether it is production of enzymes, production of antibiotics or pharmaceuticals, they need microbiologists. Then all food companies like MTR or Dabur or any other, Maggie and everything, as Nestle, all food companies require a qualified microbiologist to test their product. Not only if, uh, they look for the production, but also for quality testing. Then all pharmaceutical companies, because most of the diseases, uh, the drugs which you develop will be looking for antimicrobial property and um, qualified microbiologists are required uh, to be there. Food industry uh, like juice or fruit processing units, jams, jellies everywhere. Then beverages, alcoholic beverages, leather industry, textile industry, uh, then even antibiotics or uh, antiseptics, disinfectants, uh, water companies, you know, bisleri water is there or aquafina or any other. Everywhere, role of microbiologist is extremely important and hence a lot of job opportunities are there in microbiology. Thank you, sir. Apart from research and teaching. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, any questions from uh, participants? You can raise your hands and unmute yourself and ask the questions. Okay, Pushpalata ma'am. Ma'am, you can unmute and ask ma'am. Uh, sir, Namaste. Namaste. Uh, sir, you got... Dandruff birth at Talele, Hagei, Soria, Sisela, Burutalva, sir. How do you put on tra bacteria, Sidrinda? How do you put bacteria as well as yeast? Uh -huh. skin, skin infections. Sir, I do bring over Haruta, sir. Obviously, obviously, depending on how much you are in contact with, for example, you are uh, uh, sleeping together or the dandruff or the same comb is being used by the other individual. So the inoculum gets transferred and depending on his susceptibility, uh, he will be uh, getting infection. Um, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, uh, give me some uh, general instructions to avoid uh, all those things, sir. General instructions. Yeah, I did mention in my during my lecture, personal hygiene, hmm. public hygiene. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some of you would have seen a video of taking your uh, nail, uh, uh, I mean, in the crevices of the nail and observing under microscope thousands of organisms. In yes, the sir, yes, sir. Recently, I, I see. Yeah, yeah. So that itself is an indication that how many organisms you harbor. But again, I be optimistic that all the organisms are not harmful. At the same time, whenever you meet somebody, or you eat, for example, I have seen many youngsters sharing the cake uh, uh, in their birthday. Part of the cake is being eaten and uh, inserted into other's mouth. So the organisms move from one or oh, one person to other person. Then there is the Epstein Barr virus, which gets transferred from one person to another person through saliva. That's why it causes kissing disease in American teenagers. Kissing activity is more, and the virus spreads. So personal hygiene and public hygiene. You should not spit everywhere. The civic senses are extremely important. You know, during COVID, uh, how important it used to uh, safeguard not only you, 
but also protect others from getting infected. If I am COVID infected individual, I am supposed to wear mask, not that I should not spread the inoculum. So likewise, personal hygiene, public hygiene, civic census, all these practices will be helpful. But at the same time, presence of useful organisms is extremely important for your normal health. Even sharing of food with uh, another... Sharing of inner cloths. Uh, yes. Yeah, everything. Everything you need to be... Now uh, the days are ahead. They are working out on personal human microbiome. See, generally now the drugs being given, an antibiotic being given will be given to uniformly everybody. Amoxicillin, the doctor will write. But days are ahead that depending on the type of organisms you have, the specific antibiotics or drugs being designed. Okay. So you need to be extreme. Now I'm not telling soil, you need to uh, make the children to play in soil. I did mention benefits of human microbiome. The organisms present in you will improve your natural immunity. Okay. Any questions? Sir, uh, uh, tell me about herpes. Really, its yeah. uh, name indicates that a herp means uh, it's really yeah, come yeah. from... Okay. Because the symptoms will be uh, like, uh, like it looks like a snake. The small rashes appear and they are irregular, irregular in shape. That's why the name has come as herpes, the herpetology, you know, the worms or snakes. But it is nothing to do with the snake. It is a viral infection, like common cold only. In the children, it shows the, as all over the body, the rashes, referred as chickenpox. But in adults, when there is a psychological stress, their immunity is coming down, or in case of HIV infected individuals, the impact of herpes is more. And I did show you the Sarpa Suttu or Sarpa Unnu. It is nothing to do with the snakes, but it is a viral infection. Okay. Okay. Any questions, Pavitra? Uh, sir, uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, is an oral microbiome bank is developed, is it? Oral microbiome? Like, yes, a lot of papers are there. Okay. Hello, oral bank, oral microbiome bank is developed. Uh, so like far, this. I have not come across. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. It was a nice session. Thank you. I also got more information. My topic uh, related to oral microbiome, sir. I recently okay, I joined. Okay. All the best. All the My best. topic is oral microbiome. I got so, fine, fine. so much information, sir. Thank you. And also, it helps me to collect the articles also regarding fine, the same. Sir. Fine. Hope okay, you would have noted you. RILs. I will send the references to you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Please. Any more questions? It's actually... Okay, sir. Uh, it's a huge uh, uh, knowledge for us today. Uh, you, uh, you are very good in uh, conveying us, sir, today. Thank you. Thank you very much for accepting. Thank you for giving me an opportunity. All the best. It's our pleasure, sir. Thank you, sir. We are closing. Thank you, all the participants, for giving you.